Paul sets up an interesting proposition for us in the second reading today. And I'm pretty sure everyone here in Zoom has heard this one before. This is the reading where Paul compared the church to a human body and its members to the various body parts. He argues that the body does not consist of one member, but of many. He logically concludes that a complete and fully functioning body requires its own diversity. He states, if the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And that the head cannot say to the feet, I have no need of you. And we can extrapolate from there. It's a good analogy in part because it's one we can all understand. And also that it's quite comprehensive in terms of illustrating diversity as a vehicle of healthy functioning. I really like this passage because I've really enjoyed all the anatomy and physiology courses I've ever taken. From anatomical art classes at university to the physiology I had to learn to be an emergency medical technician to the kinesiology I studied to pass my personal trainer certification. I have come to understand that the human body is an infinitely fascinating structure. The human body in all its variations is truly a superior creation. Paul is wise to use this as his illustration of the interdependence of life and community when he writes to the Corinthians. Now, as good an analogy as that is, I think we can take this image further. In fact, I believe we are expected to do that. I would argue that God calls us to build upon this basic understanding of our interdependence. It's not enough simply to hold up the body as a living lesson for living in community. There's a lot more we can learn if we explore a little deeper. Let me explain by way of example. Many years ago, uh, I was on a town rec softball league and my team didn't do very well. Uh, so when I made it to second base, that was like a big deal. So I was there and waiting to go and hoping like if everything worked out, we might be able to tie the game, maybe actually win the game. Pitch, batter knocks the ball, line drive to right field. So I start taking off to third base. I thought the batter hit the ball further than he did. But the look on my coach's face told me something very different, that the ball was coming in fast and I had to get to that base if I was going to make it at all. So he gave me the slide sign. So I did. Because sliding into third base is awesome. So I did. And I slid. And my foot hit that bag. And whoever put the bag at third base they didn't attach to the ground the right way. So when my foot hit the base, the base flipped up and it took my ankle with it. I broke my ankle. I heard a weird sound. I felt a peculiar feeling and I slid in and I was like, what was that? And I stood up and I went right back down again. And thus I spent the whole of my summer with a broken leg, a uh, broken ankle. And it occurred to me just how amazingly integrated the human body is. My ankle was broken. My ankle, all the way down there. And yet, it impacted almost every other part of my body. Like, I had to walk around on crutches, and so my arms would get tired of moving around on the crutches. And so I would stop and I would rest on the crutches. 
I know you're not supposed to do that, but you know, we all do it anyways. And then my, my shoulders and my arms would ache. And so I wouldn't lean on the crutches. I'd just stand on my other foot. And then that leg started to get tired. And my hip started to ache on the other side. And it was painful at night, and so I would wake up at night and I couldn't fall back asleep because it hurt and so that interrupted my sleep and made my thinking the next day a little cloudy and all these other parts of my body were impacted because of something that happened to a little bone all the way down there on one side. I was compensating for what I couldn't do with the ankle and then eventually other parts were decompensating because they couldn't keep up with the demand point is, when one party body part doesn't function, the rest of the body part's functionality is also inhibited. When Paul presents human communities in terms of a human body, we need to understand that the same things that make our bodies fragile are also present in our communities. Where there is dysfunction or malfunction in, in one part of a community, well, you can bet it's going to have an impact on the other parts of the community. Paul also says in our second reading today, there should be no division in the body, but that its members should have mutual concern for one another. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is on it, Every part rejoices with it. Likewise, in order to function at our best, peak performance, as my personal trainer colleagues would say, all the body parts need to be supporting all the other body parts. So, for example, when lifting a heavy weight, it matters where your eyes are pointing. Because where our eyes go, heads follow. And if your alignment during a heavy lifting motion isn't correct, you can really hurt yourself. As an emergency medical technician, I responded to plenty of medical emergencies where a person's blood sugar, those levels created life risk situations. People showed me presentations that varied from confusion and rapid heart rate to nausea and pain and shakiness all the way to a loss of consciousness which sometimes would end up with a, some trauma when they whack their heads on the coffee table on the way down to passing out. Who would have thought that skipping breakfast could have such detrimental effects on so many other parts of the body? In parish work, clergy understand that congregations function a lot like human systems, where one member or ministry of a parish is not getting the support and attention needed, other parts of the community can fall into neglect. In the same way, where one aspect of a parish receives too much attention, focus from other areas of parish life can be drawn away and so other parts wind up being neglected. There's a special interconnectedness in Christian communities that's worthy of our intentional care and our careful attention. Parishes, like human bodies, need to maintain a particular kind of balance in order to function at their best. Whether we're living in a time of social distance or gathering like we once did, uh, as close as we'd like for as long as we'd like, let it be understood that keeping our attention on maintaining a healthy balance among all our membership, our ministries, and our mission in Pitt Meadows and Maple Ridge is critical to our ability to fulfill the dream of God. God made us to work together in mutual support with a healthy balance. 
We've been given the ability to offer extra help when and where it's needed, and the joy of feeling that shared success when all things are functioning well. The call of God for the body of Christ in the world is to always be mindful of our divine interconnectedness. When we strike that holy balance, we glorify God in our very being. And God rewards us with abundance and joy, with the joy in believing through the power of the Spirit. And when we reach that place where things are in balance, where all the ministries and the mission and the individuals and the groups that make up this particular body of Christ, when we get to that point, that's when we can really see what we are capable of accomplishing as Christ's body in the world. That is the kind of functioning that the genuine balanced interconnectedness can create for us. It's a sustainability that moves us a long way into the future. Maintaining that health, that balance, that careful attention on our interconnectedness is ultimately God's call on the body of Christ in the world. And that's good news.